Hello everyone, this is the great Lord and Master, Osaron the Eternal. For a follow-up video, video to yesterday's video, this is, this is huge. This may even be the secret to Vortex Math and maybe why Vortex Math isn't working. Because you know, I know there is a uh, rodent coil out there, but I just don't know that it's working, but this might be the secret to that. Yesterday I, sh I made a video uh, called Vortex Math and uh, the cu Cube of Lord Osteron, but that's a 2D structure. Today I'm applying the same Vortex Math principles to uh, the, the 3D cube, which just happens to be the, the Nordic Yggdrasil. The Yggdrasil is actually the 3D Vortex Math Cube. You're going to see that in a minute. Okay, what we got here is the Yggdrasil. We've all seen this before. The Vortex Math Wheel. And I think I did a fine job drawing it this time. It's all symmetrical. And this is what happens when you use two Yggdrasil versions, one being built from the ground up and the other being built from the top down simultaneously. There's a dual action field being created. And this is, this is 3D. In this structure, there isn't a line on here that's not being used. Every line that isn't being used isn't there. So everything on here is actually being used. Over here, there's lines not being used. But this is only half of the equation. And this also fixes the uh, issue with the Yggdrasil I had of the construction of it. Because it, it actually, it, it does build both ways, but it does something, and it, it, it... I think this is only going to be a fucking intro video to this, this particular concept here, because this is huge. I think this could very well be the secret to Vortex Math that people are missing, because this is... This is big, and this follows the lines of uh, Russellian sci science, Walter Russell and his cube sphere model. I think an issue might be trying to create a toroid out of material matter and then expecting it to work in the cube sphere grid. I think what you do is you, is you charge the cube sphere grid, which all my work is about basically. You charge the cube sphere grid and the energy field created is a toroid inside of the cube spheres. But I think uh, that might be one of the problems, but this is, I'm going to need to really, really analyze this for a while I think. But So I think this is going to be just an introduction video. I just want to get this documented. But here it is. Here's what happens with the uh, Yggdrasil when you apply vortex math principles. Okay. You got zero here, but here's one, okay, and one plus one is two, two plus two is four, four plus four is eight, eight plus eight is sixteen, uh, sixteen plus sixteen is thirty-two, thirty-two plus thirty-two is sixty-four. So what it's doing is it's going over, in, out, over, in, out, <laughs> something like that. It, but it, I got it over here, I'll, I'll explain that in a second. But this is only half of the equation. Over here what you do is there's two simultaneous actions going on. You got a starting point from this one and a starting point from this one. And they work simultaneously. So as this one goes to two, this upper one goes to two. And you're going to notice that they both go to the masculine field at the same time. Okay? And then what happens is they both go back to the center at the same time. So 2 and 2 go back to 4 and 4. Boom, inside. Now we're inside. Now they both shoot out again back to the other side, to 8, to the 8s. And one goes this way and one goes that way. And then they both go to the 7s. One goes here and one goes here. Now they both shoot back in again. Boom, boom. And then they shoot back to where they started boom and boom. All simultaneously happening. Okay, this is perfectly symmetrical, it's simultaneous action, but it's not, it's like both sides go to masculine at the same time and then shoot to the center, but it's not really shooting to the center because this is 2D. 
what really happens is this. Here's the journey of the downward motion, okay, and you'll see what these letters mean as they say it, okay. So we go from rear upper to, I'm using uh, Yaquin and Boaz to symbolize left and right because there's no way I could have done it without using either an R or an F twice for either masculine and feminine or right and left. You know, it would have confused the whole thing. So I'm just using Boaz first and Yaquin as the names for right and left or masculine and feminine because it's less confusion ultimately. Okay. So here's a downward path. Rear upper to Yaquin upper is this. One, two, that. Yaquin upper to front upper is this. Front upper downward to front lower is this. Now we're on the front lower. Uh, front lower to Boaz rear is this. Um, Boaz, Boaz to rear lower is there. Uh, and then rear lower up, upward, back upward to rear upper. And that is the circuit for the downward. And now the upward circuit goes here. <coughs> front lower to uh, Yaquin lower. Yaquin lower to rear lower. Rear lower upward to rear upper. Rear upper to Boaz upper over here. Boaz upper to front upper here. Back to that. And front upper downward to front lower, back to the start. And this is what's happening simultaneously. <clears throat> and it says here, Bo uh, Boaz and Yaquin act as pure kundalini conduits using two and seven as agents, blood and electricity. The seven, as, as I've said in this series, represents the fluid to the body, blood, and two represents the material matter in its purest form, electricity. Okay, and you're gonna notice the Kundalini agents are only these two, uh, Yaquin and Boaz. Boaz is the threes, and uh, Yaquin is the sixes. These over here are all the material numbers. The front and the rears are just the material: four and five, and one and eight. But then again, one is Kundalini, and five is also Kundalini with, with the uh, feminine aspect of the elements in the middle. So, so that's that. That's why that's like that. And then this is one of probably the biggest secrets of it all in regards to the Yggdrasil in the aspect of 0 and 9. See, on the Yggdrasil as it's presented, 9 and 0 are shown externally, but they're not. 9 and 0 are the same point on the center point of the cube. 9 and 0 are actually the center point of the cube. Okay, and we see how that works in my video. Um, you know, the tarot, the tarot cube or something like that. The uh, true tarot cube, I get into that. But, um, so that's why that's like that. So these, over here, these lines are actually angling upward from 9 to 3 and 6. From uh, 9 to 3 and 6 are actually in the center. And that's represented by these, I have them shown as arcs here. Arcs of green from 3 to 6. Okay? But what what's really going on, it, it really... There's actually a center point that's uh, 0 and 9, and I think that sort of has an activation aspect to it, depending on what's going on here, you know. So now the greens, I shorten them to go to the middle in the loop like that, but that's just to show that they're going cross-angularly, you know. Because if you remember, all the angle points of the, uh, of the cube reduce to 9. We got uh, 1 and 8. 2 and 7, 3 and 6, and then in the center, 4 and 5. All those angles. So the Kundalini itself is actually going f on angular patterns through the center of the cube. Okay? And that's why that's like that. So this is a quick video. I just wanted to show how vortex math applies to the three-dimensional cube. Yesterday I did it in 2D. Check out that video. It's still a pretty good video. And there's probably, I wouldn't be surprised if there's more to come with this. But uh, thank you and namaste.